We were young, pretty dumb. We painted this sport bike in the living room of our apartment. But our landlord lived upstairs. So we have to clean this up, all this overspray, and we don't know what to do. So we use gasoline. So we're like wiping the walls down, gasoline, mopping the floor with gasoline because it removed it. It got rid of it. But the our landlord smell. calls down and he's like, uh, do you know what's happening down there? I'm like, no, why? He's like, I smell gasoline. I was like, oh, really? That's crazy. He's like, he's like I'm afraid to light a cigarette. I was like, yeah, yeah, you probably don't want to do that till you find out what the problem is. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't start this episode with yawning. I feel like the past two episodes have been with yawns. Mm, whoops. Mm. <laughs> oh my goodness. But it's rough, uh, man. Yeah, it's we're a morning hard, today, man. so we're good. Welcome back to another episode of Modify with Trick Factory Customs. If it's your first time watching, my name is Elvis. Tim. Rob. And uh, <laughs> on this episode, we are going to be discussing building a custom car shop or garage on a budget. Recently, I have... Um, been thinking about that uh, with having a family or child wife all of that i mm -hmm, cannot mm -hmm. always come to the shop here to work on my projects and so i've been needing to start thinking about new solutions to that mm. and so we're gonna discuss that uh what that entails people that might be thinking about the same thing uh what you should look at budget wise what you what you should look at there's a lot of different things we're going to be diving into tools you need it's going to be a mm. very comprehensive episode. So with that said, Ooh, okay. yeah, let's get started. All right, let's dig in. Awesome. So week, how's the week? What's happening? We basically are finished the 190. Oh. It's heading back to the 2.516. Oh. Yeah. So that nice. one has been a challenge. Yeah. Yep. So shout out to Mark. Ooh. Is it? Mercedes? What's this? Instagram? Yeah, Mark. Yeah, oh, Mark. Yeah. Mercedes G-Wagon on Instagram. Yes. Yeah. He uh, used his clout to get us the missing windshield for that car because we <laughs> searched for it for okay. almost two years that's insane. yeah cheers to you so yes that was like the final missing piece because we weren't able to get one we tried a million different options nobody would ship us one even if we were able to find it so he got mm -hmm. us one from mercedes OEM. oh yeah so yeah. yes we can finally get that car wrapped up and sent home so that's pretty exciting i'd say that's probably the biggest success of the week other than that it's just kind of more of the same we we've been all waiting for that window and the, the finalization of that project it's like i mean it's just a restoration um for a long long time um it, it looks amazing it's a beautiful car it's a it beautiful so car so that was a big project coming to a to a close mm -hmm. um i was working on the skylark a lot more the yeah. skylark saga continues um we did a lot we did a lot of work finalized the front bumper we got the the seven inch diameter headlights installed into it uh rad supports finalized well almost finalized seeing that um, thing with headlights it looks so good it's like it yeah all like of a sudden a it looks like a car again right <laughs> yes. i mean it, it's a big deal and uh moving forward on that project like now we can scan that area and we can start developing the the bezels that that will create the the final shape that we see, because we're we designed a completely new hood scoop, cutting a hole in the in the hood for the Wegner supercharger to poke through, required us to do a whole bunch of things. So the snowball rolls, and we got a bunch of material for that. So moving forward, I'm looking forward to get into that, we'll grab some momentum and and just go for it. Sweet, and so, so yeah. With that said, we are going to dive into the topic. Um, so building a custom car, garage, shop, shed, whatever it may be. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can build a garage and shop. And again, the reason why I suggested this topic is just because I'm trying to do that now, just mm -hmm. because of the reasons I mentioned earlier. Um, and so, yeah, so I just wanted to pick you guys' brain on what options to go with here because I'm working with a very, very tight budget or almost non-existent mm -hmm. budget. Well, I mean, it, it's, we've been doing this now for quite some time so, and yeah, budget's okay. always kind of like, you know, it's a major part of the formula in, in your decisions. So and we've gone through many different variations from base level yes. all the way up to like, 
how many square feet of like shop Almost do we have now? Thirty thousand. <laughs> like it's it's been that's a constant cool. evolution. The evolution of the shop never ends. Yeah. So that's why I wanted to pick you guys' brain about this because so where did you guys so before we okay. dive into my own story, let's start with you guys. Yeah, we can I can break down the <laughs> stages for you for where yes. we start. So where did you guys start from? Basically, well, the first step was buying a house okay. that you could actually do what you want to do to and be allowed to do what you want to do to. So mm -hmm. we started with that. We had a back alley. So I think there was many late nights under tarps and like <laughs> under tarps on gravel, on gravel, temporary yeah. buildings. And then, yeah, from there we designed and built our own garage behind the house, mm -hmm. like built it ourselves. That's wow. So okay. literally like bought like some generic, plans from the internet and then adapted them to our thing did the whole city permit thing built it literally with the help of my stepfather framed it roofed it mm -hmm. did the concrete like just the story behind that <laughs> and the characters involved was crazy yeah yeah pretty wild now like tim like you when you were a young man coming up in the world you used to work for your stepfather and he yes. he's a very 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 accomplished framer in in uh, oh, okay in yeah. residential construction so i used to work summers for him yeah okay so the idea of building like this shop like i think it was we maximize it because there's there's like a percentage that you have to have so being a car guy mm -hmm. i didn't do 20 by 40. i did like 21.7 by 49.9 like, yeah, like, like the, the max, absolute the max. maximum so it was like a weird shaped garage but anyways we built that and then that's where we sort of started our business and then so it kind of evolved a little bit from that point too but like just in in that we built the garage that was really cool we had multiple locations that we were working out of out of the t at that time yeah but uh and then our previous boss because we both have uh, industrial fabrication background mm -hmm. so then once we started doing that's where we started tinkering and building and doing stuff and then once we transitioned a bit bigger than that we ended up putting a paint booth in the back of our boss's shop because he his shop's probably what seventy thousand square feet it was massive was i mean massive. industrial fabrication like big scale stuff mm -hmm. so so he got in the car stuff he allowed us to build a shop within the shop that's amazing so we used to work all day and then go back into our little corner and then work all night <laughs> and then progression from there we needed some autonomy i think a yep. little, some separation so we ended up renting a small space it was like 15 or 1700 square feet. Oh, it, it was in that neighborhood. That's pretty common for where we live, like oh. 15 to 1700 square feet. It's like a single bay, you know, multi, multi business, you know, commercial complex. So once we got in there, we're like, man, what are we going to do with all this space? <laughs> but that so was terrifying. Yeah. I remember being terrified, like, okay, fuck, man, we're going to sign this lease, dude. Like, we're five years, man. If we can't we make this work, this? Oh my God. we're going to, we're going to lose our fucking nuts here for sure. Yeah. But that was, so that was pretty scary, but, uh, then you know, the natural progression, we ended up taking over the unit next to us. Nice. So then we doubled our space and then this particular location we coveted for years, but this was like, I don't know what the story behind it was. It was like overgrown, overrun. This place? This place. Oh, place here, yeah. Wow. So I like kept my eye on it literally for probably six or seven years that's insane and then when it came available i was like here just same day <laughs> just standing in the parking lot like trying to find out who owned it all this kind of stuff and then we moved into here and then we grew out of here into the other space and then now the body shop and it's like yeah we literally started under like a lean-to yeah, with yeah, the blue yeah, yes. tarp yep in the pouring rain <laughs> laying on the gravel like it was it's been a climb man yeah yeah and like even before that like before you even had a space in the backyard to do anything we were just like anybody man like on the side of the road yep you know <laughs> out in front, front of, in front of your home yes like you know you're not supposed to be doing this but you're like changing you know manual transmission Oil, clutches and, and shit like that. Me and this guy painted in a motorcycle in our apartment one <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. On the third Not story. recommended. Oh my like God. We built a whole motorcycle in our apartment and then had to take it down the stairs at like one in the morning. Like, <laughs> yeah. While nobody was around. Then yeah. another apartment, 
we painted one in the living room. What the? And then when we left, we had to clean up all the yellow overspray. overspray. <laughs> it was that story's funny. We have to tell that story. Yeah. yeah. What is so it? So, anyways, we were young, pretty dumb. <laughs> we painted this sport bike in the living room of our apartment, but our landlord lived upstairs, so I think it was like a fourplex or something. So oh, we were in the lower no. level. Anyways, we spray this thing. It's fine. It turns out, and we get this thing out of there. But now we're moving out. We've put in our notice, and we're leaving. So we have to clean this up, all this overspray, and we don't know what to do. So we use gasoline. <gasps> so we're like, <laughs> the walls down, gasoline, mopping the floor with gasoline because it removed it. It got rid of it. But the our landlord smell. calls down and he's like, uh, <laughs> do you know what's happening down there? I'm like, no, why? He's like, I smell gasoline. I was like, oh, really? That's crazy. <laughs> he's, like, he's, he's like, I'm afraid to light a cigarette. I was like, yeah, yeah, you probably don't want to do that until you find out what the problem is. Yeah. So we had to open all the doors. We had fans going. Oh, my God. Yeah. I was like, yeah, we'll have a look down here. Maybe it's a jerry can on the patio sure. or something. Yeah. So, yeah, it was pretty funny. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, yo. He asked us to stay after that, so he never knew it was So he never knew it was <laughs> No. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't recommend that. Why didn't that. you use like acetone dude, or we something? Broke as dude, shit. we had we had like <laughs> we had no zero money. funds, man. <laughs> you were you're young and trying to come up, man. Gas was not as expensive as it is now, so that yeah. was the cheapest solution. Wow! Oh my god, it was though. pretty funny though. Don't yeah. do that at home. <laughs> yeah, don't yeah. do that. At home. <laughs> it's gasoline. Yeah. Oh, that's Anyways. amazing. Okay, so yeah, that's our climb to the. Yeah, but like in all of that progression like how do you know like first of all like you needed to move or are you like you outgrew that space because our projects outgrew the space so it wasn't necessarily that our projects were too big for the space it's just when you're in residential you can't be out grinding and hammering until two in the morning mm. so the transition to industrial space allowed us to do that and then we're yeah. free to do whatever we want whenever we want it oh, so i mean like we were pretty good because our neighbors were fairly lenient they're all car guys for the most part so we had a certain amount of leniency but it just got to be too much like we we're cutting and grinding like our projects got bigger and then yeah so yeah. we had to transition yeah like i mean anybody coming up you know trying to develop skill sets and whatever and trying to come up in this world you need new equipment your your projects get progressively more and more complex and bigger dirtier like you said you're now you're grinding a lot and you're making a lot of noise a lot of sparks and you just need you didn't need more space more equipment and the reality of that set in and we're like we need to get more room and the residential thing no longer no longer worked for us mm. i mean i i still reflect back on on those times as being some of the greatest times you know in, in our in our little world days. yeah the you garage know, days were the best days. The garage days were super fun. They were super, super cool. Like, you know, and and you're kind of like looking towards creating that in your life now. Yeah. And and I really, really hope that you move forward on that because man, there is super, super cool to be able to do that. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Um because <clears throat> like I mean, I started with like literally when I started getting, I've always been interested in cars, but actually working on cars like my Datsun, <clears throat> this was like in LA, literally North Hollywood, nice neighborhood. And you just see a guy just cutting his Datsun in the driveway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so I, yeah, so I didn't have, I, like it didn't rain that much in California, which was amazing for me. Like yeah. the entire time I built that car, it did not rain one day in the, how many months that we did it. And so, um, yeah, so I did that. And, but even before that, like I used to live in like an apartment building in like West Hollywood or whatever, but it was, you could not, they literally had the sayings, you could not work. It's one of those like very big apartment complexes where there's like, there's like a shop in it. There's like a pool, like oh, a yeah. massive community pool, all that stuff. And so I could not work on my car in the complex. And they were very clear with that because I tried and I, a guy, security guy saw me. <laughs> He's like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, even, so, even in our neighborhood in front of my house, I had a neighbor call the cops on me one oh time. Oh, my. Come on. Doing my own brakes out in front of the house before I had a garage. And she, like, the bylaw like, guy like came. Like in your own driveway and everything, too, right? That's so... That's so 
I had to prove that it was my own car because oh she claimed that I was like running a shop, like what a, the heck? a garage in front of my house. Yeah. So the bylaw guy came. <laughs> I had to show him my registration that it was my own car because yeah. you're allowed a certain amount of leniency. Mm-hmm. With like but, basic stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, for the most part, had to drive out of LA to do, I like, and it was breaks. Same thing with you. I could not do my breaks in the apartment complex. So I literally drove. 45, almost an hour away from my home in the uh, Los Angeles mountains. And <laughs> just sit on the side of the road? <laughs> really? Yeah. Yo. Because like in the LA, whatever, National Forest, Los Angeles, or what I forgot what the name of the place is, but Angeles Crest National Forest or Angeles Crest Highway. It's like known for being like motorcycles, driving mm. it's a car enthusiasts, heaven, yeah. one of the best driving roads in the world. But they had some like places that are like, uh, what did they See, call See, I've them? seen people like you, the little rest areas and <laughs> the pull out, yes. just doing motor jobs and shit at <laughs> the rest area. I'm like, what is happening here? Yeah, that's why. And so I literally did my breaks and I was like, Praying to God that, and I hadn't done a comprehensive brake job like that ever. It was my 370Z. Like I did brakes, calipers, everything. Ble- like it was a whole, di- like oh, I'm wow. so glad that the brakes worked because if not, like. Then you're stranded. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, there's mount, like literally just drop offs on like literally to your death. And so if I did not, and I had to bet in the brakes, all of that stuff there and then. And so thank God that it all worked out. But yeah, like, so it's just been a progression. And so where I'm at now, I have a lot of land, thankfully, um, which is kind of where the idea of the idea came, but there's no garage. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was like, hmm, maybe I should build something. Um, but I, I'm not sure of what solution or what garage or what shed to go with. And so, yeah. so far, what, I have one in mind to go with, and I kind of shared it with you before that they don't know. Tim is nodding his head, but I thought <laughs> I thought about using shipping containers and making a shipping container garage <laughs> because, like, sh- a lot of people, it's like in it's in vogue or it's like a thing now for people to make shipping container homes. And that in itself, I would not, I have thought about it, but I would not necessarily do that just because of the cost associated with that, because you're no longer building a, it's not a shipping, it's not as easy as people make it out to be, but a shipping container garage is, you could have it, I feel like as bare bones as possible. I think you can make a workshop out of a shipping container, but trying to move a car in and out of a shipping container, I don't think it's going to be that easy. I so I have thought about this long it's, and hard. It's I'm still the thinking about it. Size of them that makes it a problem. So what about stacking containers? Like three of I'm I'm my thoughts are so they you come need three of them. Yeah, so they come in two, two sizes or a few sizes, like twenty foot right and yeah. forty foot and then forty foot high cube or something. So I think they have like a taller, uh, taller one. Yeah, but I think the one. real issue is the the internal dimension in the width of it. So how wide are they? Like, like they're eight like eight feet, feet. Like okay, eight, eight foot, foot, right? It yeah. is inside eight feet, eight and a half feet to the outside because that's as wide as it can be to go down the highway. Mm-hmm. So if you put two of them together, you're only sixteen feet deep. That's not enough for a car because your average car is about sixteen feet. Mm-hmm. So then now you need a third one. Yeah, because and then getting in the end, you can barely get a car in it. So like the in and out of it would be a nightmare. You wouldn't even want to do it. Mm-hmm. Plus, you got the ledge. You got all this other stuff. You're gonna to have to make ramps and a bunch of shit. So you'd need at least three of them. I think three of them would make a decent size shop. Mm. That's basically yeah. the size of my shop so like that I built behind my house, which is like twenty four by forty. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's like the thought that I have now. But again, it's just gonna be. It's also gonna be a lot of work because again, shipping containers were not meant to ha- to be garages. No. So, <laughs> so yeah. like right there in the linear amount of feet that you would have to weld to seal that thing up, you have hundreds of feet of welding. I know, that's a lot of welding. Yes. And uh, so I'm not looking forward to that. Uh, and then you have to also make sure it's strengthened too because. I, feel, I think I've, they're pretty strong. I've heard that once you cut out the walls, like it kind of gets a little bit, uh, it can sag because of the extra weight. And especially when like rainfall or like snow. Snow load falls, here you have like, to well, worry about. Most definitely that's part of your formula, your factor here, right? We, we have snow load. We have all of that here. And, mm-hmm. and it's wet six yeah. months of the year. Yeah. And so and there's a lot of other layers sealed. to that. Like you got to try to insulate this thing. Yeah. Yeah, you'll oh, you'll get condensation for weeping on the inside of it. I was going to ask what like happens it needs if it's to be not fully insulated. insulated. You're going to freeze. 
What about with the heater and stuff? In the summertime, you're going to be sweltering, and in the wintertime, you're going to freeze. (laughs) Yeah. So I I think think this might be uh, on a a fail sort of department. It's not a a good idea. Really? Why? I think you can get one of those prefab buildings for less. Yeah, but I've heard bad things about prefab. So in case you don't know what prefab building is, it's like pretty much a prefab home where it's a prefab garage. They, they, it's like a kit you buy, and it's steel, and you assemble it. Yeah, you can it. get wood ones too. Oh, okay. Like a proper garage. Yeah, you can I didn't get know you like could do fabric that. ones too, can't you? The fabric ones are really, not good. So well, I know that's what I'm saying. But like, there's yeah. levels to this, right? Yeah. Prefab, like you got like fabric, metal, wood. Like you could. You got to think beyond just what you need to do the job. Do you really want a big container thing on your property? You can make it. You look have a beautiful sick, new home, and you want to put a big <laughs> pile of shit next to it. You can make it look sick. Like, yeah, but I, what's it gonna? At what cost? Mm. By the time you you know put lipstick on a pig, okay. you could have just bought a proper thing. Okay, here. So like, I just did a quick search right away, mm-hmm. and we kind of we kind of touched on this on our last conversation. So. Prefab, like you can get a, a prefab roof structure with an end wall for containers that contain that is boxed in bookshelf mm. by containers. We talked about that yeah, on the see, last that's one. What you should build. So that seems like it would be a pretty good solution. I think that as far as like getting kind of entry level and having a decent space to work, especially for where we live, that's kind of important. You get. You get like paint room, you get like fab room or storage, plus it's walled in, roofed off, and sealed on all four sides. But that roof or that one that's like all yeah constructed, that is looks like it's um, a fabric style. That's okay. The yeah, problem, but that comes in levels too, though. Uh, if you go uh, by the $4,500 one or the $10,000 one, it's... Yeah. You see them everywhere. Because I've yeah. used it before multiple times. Like yeah, for like, that's probably from Amazon. And the sun literally Amazon. destroys it the sun snow. where'd you get it from princess harbor uh, or harbor uh, freight uh, no not harbor freight what's the name of the canadian canadian tire yes. there's that's level, what I have there's from. levels this, to the game these are these are like this is more industrial spec mm. yeah but you can get the corrugated panels that would be fun if you went to the metal version of that mm-hmm. but that's also quite a bit more expensive too so. <laughs> yeah, you know what, and that's the thing, and and so this conversation, like, there's many many levels to it, right? Depending on what's your budget, what's what kind of footprint you can have, like, are, are you gonna do concrete slab? Like, there's so many things to factor in on this mm-hmm. dis- in this discussion. Like, if you add concrete slab on your on your ground, now all of a sudden you're paying more pro- property tax here, right? So, I'm so that's part of the gravel. equation. See, if I'm doing the shipping container route, I want to do gravel because again, and then kind of sink it into it a little bit so I can maybe build a little ramp to get in there to get the car in but that's again just my basic idea just because again if you're doing concrete slabs that's more cost more expense Mm -hmm. yeah more material all of that stuff Um, and so that was like the basic thought but yeah and I don't think there's anything wrong with that I mean from what we've experienced in life working on gravel it kind of sucks but now you ever tried to roll a creeper on gravel no, but it's not. That's what I'm saying. It's not going to be on gravel. But like, like, you could like you could like fully tamp that gravel, like really, and you know, use a really nice fine gravel, and create a really really hard structure. I think it'd be. Shit. I think it'd be no. a decent so place shit. to start. You're not going to want to work on that. No, I'm not yeah. going to work on the gravel. It's going to be the container, in the container. On the container. Yeah, yeah, the container. Yeah, level it on the gravel and everything. So everything is going to take place in the container. And I was thinking again of mm-hmm. building like an awning of some sort with the container wall that I cut out of just to be resourceful. Has your but wife been a part of this conversation? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't, not I don't involved her in know this. No, she's going to agree with your plan. <laughs> it's starting to sound a little bit shantytown no. right now. <laughs> like it was not going to look good. Yes. Think? I feel like you can make it look good if I'm you sure put you can, the proper. If you spend some money on it. Mm-hmm. Yes, true. But I feel like you could, like you always say, put in the sweat equity, make it's it gonna it be look a lot. good. It's going to be uh, a lot. So, but again, with this shipping container problem, or why I don't want to go with it is just because it's also a lot of fabrication, a lot gonna of be, it's gonna cutting, be a, tremendous a lot amount of, of welding, work. Yeah. time, just abrasives, paint. 
all that stuff, I think you're going to start approaching the cost of like a prefabbed garage. Yeah, and t- and just time. Because what's spent. the container cost? Thirty five hundred. Mm-hmm. And then that's what times three. Eight times forty, twenty four, seven. You're like thirty thousand square feet of paintable surfaces. Like it's going to cost <laughs> you a fortune. Mm-hmm. A fortune. Not so, a good idea. Plus, you got to prep that shit. <laughs> yeah. Man, that's a lot of paint. That's a lot of linear feet of welding. No. It's a lot. Mm. And so, yeah, those are. that was just one thought that I have. And, and so, is it going to increase or decrease property values? Mm. I don't know because it's yeah. a temporary structure. So I don't know if the value, if that counts as a value increment or a reduction. I don't My guess would be it's going to decrease the value. Mm, I don't think so, though. Curb appeal? <laughs> Curb appeal, man. <laughs> there's value up. in that, you dude. You make it look nice, though. Like it, I think I, I don't can think make it look nice. I don't think there's a lot you can do to a container to make it truly look like it makes sense mm. in, in a nice neighborhood. A, a decent amount of money. Yeah. So, yeah. Prefab construction, I believe, is the, the right play. Um, there's a lot of companies out there that exist. You can get full metal ones that... You know, just stand it up in a weekend kind of thing. And we get so much wind in this area, too. Yeah. That's another thing yeah, that I'm like. you got to build a proper building. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> see, that's the thing. And see, that's the thing. The like first time it gets, okay, you can build it. Well, get one of these temporary structures. The first time it gets cold, windy, rainy, like right away, again, you're not working. Mm. We've done it. Yep. And next thing you know, you're waiting five days to work on your car again because it's too shitty outside and you're freezing. And not to pick on you any further, <laughs> but let's just be real here. For oh, a my gosh. OK, let's let's discuss <laughs> your current work situation. Yeah. You at any given time have three heaters on a hoodie <laughs> and a jacket. How does that have to do with anything? <laughs> and you believe for a moment that you're going to go work in a tin can in the middle of winter time? Not a damn chance. No. Not a chance. No. Yeah. Uh, no. I don't That's that's, this that's is, tough this is reality right there. Reality. Like mm. you have to remember I think we start every one of these conversations with you need to be honest with yourself. <laughs> this is a moment <laughs> You should be looking into our values of insulation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Educating yourself on that. Yeah. So you can't just use a, like heaters and that's it? If you want to burn money, go ahead. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You're just burning money, man. Here, I pay the hydro bill at your house. <laughs> you'll be paying the hydro bill. So yeah. right away, you'll be like, nope. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, okay. So let's... Uh, Pause the container area yeah, for now. So let's just for yeah, now. Yeah. Uh, it's Fair not enough. completely dismissed, but I think more research needs to be done on that mm-hmm. topic. Mm-hmm. So, like, what would you say, like, if you were to go with a traditional, like, building framing, all of that cement, like you guys did in your first shop? Mm-hmm. What and factoring into you guys did it a long time ago, so I'm sure costs and prices have changed. But you're in tune with the prices of things now. So what would you say that was like 20 by 40 ish, right? Yeah, like 24 so by 40. So 24 by 40. So what would that remote ballpark for materials alone cost? So at that time, I think I built that garage. What was that? 25 years ago? Damn. Yeah, it has to have been though. Yeah, and it cost $17,000. <laughs> so I would have to say that now is probably at least three times as much. It, it, it oh has to. It has to. Gosh. I think the most expensive part of the whole thing, because we built everything ourselves. We built the formings, we built everything. And along the way, you have to have things inspected. So Mm -hmm. it's not like we were even able to do anything janky. It's like, this was not a temporary building. Mm -hmm. We had to build it properly to code, to specifications, blah, 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 blah. And the most expensive part was the floor, pouring the floor. The concrete. Like Like at that time, the concrete to pour the founded, the forms and the floor was five thousand dollars oh my gosh whereas the rest of it i think we built the thing over the course of probably six months as i could afford it Mm -hmm. so like port got the foundation and then the walls and then the roof and then yeah all the shit then you come back and you pour the floor so the single biggest outlay was for the floor yeah yeah And, and so the the main floor and the roof trusses 
were things that we outsourced. Yeah. We had another company make the roof trusses. Okay. And then we made all the walls and everything else on our own. Sheeted it. Yeah. Then put the roof on it. Then poured the floor, wrapped it. The thing left was unsided for probably six months or a year because <laughs> I literally paid as I could go. And then we put siding on it to make it look nice. Mm-hmm. Then we went back inside, put insulation in it because we did the same thing. Mm-hmm. We were in there with just basic sheeting and propane heaters. And then we are like, okay, this is getting ridiculous. We need to put some insulation in this mm-hmm. thing because we'd be out there f- oh, freezing our asses yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. Dang, dude. Yeah, it's 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 definitely like this. This whole thing is like one of those kind of things where you got to do your research mm-hmm. and <clears throat> save your money and just go get yeah, it get it do done. It. Just put, tear it off like a band aid, man. That, that's too much money. No, you have I to do it. I already just spent money on a house. Yeah, and so that <laughs> yeah, that's and, just uh, reality, oh, man. Yeah, that's gosh. real life, man. Like we're not, especially here, we're not in a location where these temporary buildings are viable. Yeah, like they are not. for small projects and maybe keeping the branches off your car, but for working in, it just, you can't here. No, the weather. you can't leave your tools outside. Mm-hmm. It's like California, you leave your shit outside, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, literally, yeah. It's that's no what I deal. did. Here, it would be toasted in like three months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wet, there's, wet, there's a cold, very, there's a very, very hot, definitive difference between storage lo- area and a workspace, mm. you know? Like you need, your workspace needs to be insulated. You need to make it comfortable. Otherwise you are not gonna work. True, that's very true. Like you just won't. Mm-hmm. Like I don't care what you say. Like even here, it's like the amount that it costs to heat this building, it's like, it's on the minimum <laughs> and you're still like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, You yeah. know, you crank it up another seven degrees and all of a sudden you're hauling ass. Oh gosh. So it's, yeah, it's a fine line. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if it's wet and cold, you're just not gonna You do, do not wanna work because I have tried that even like work because even here, a lot like my project is outside. Uh, one of my projects is outside the Jag, and it's like I've not. I mean, if the weather is wet or if it's cold, I just don't even bother. I mean, exactly. Even if it's cold, like I try to do it for like twenty minutes and I'm just done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, we all watch these guys in California that are out in their driveway, living their best days, life. Man. Yeah, I they got this basic, days. just little thing to keep the sun from beating on them. It looks very romantic, but here we don't have that. They no, even paint don't. outside too. <laughs> Dude, I watched a whole body shop once. I was there like working in another place for a bit and it was like, car would come in, they'd do body work, paint, clear, polish, and we leave in the same day <laughs> outside. And these were like good cars. Yeah. But then you go on a freeway and after paint's peeling off yeah. and everything. Mm-hmm. So I mean, that's the reality of it, but it's still, it was pretty wild to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Like yeah, most we, paint booths there are outside. Yes. Like literally you go to an auto body shop, the paint booth is outside of the building in the parking lot. Yes. We could never do that here. I miss no. those days. <laughs> no, we- Why don't we move to California? What's keeping us in Vancouver? Come on. Oh, I'm ready to go anytime, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the rent prices I hear are the same. Yeah. <laughs> or the, the what's it called? Property values and stuff Vegas. are pretty similar. Vegas yeah. is the play. Mm. Right? Yeah. Yeah, oh we've, been, we've been talking about moving for a long, long time now. Yeah. So. Um, and so with the garage or building out of the way, the structure, let's go to like tools and stuff, because even after building the garage, the physical structure, you still need to outfit it with things that you need. Mm-hmm. Um, and so for you guys, what were the essentials that you guys used back then? And what are they the same now or that? So I think there's there's been some evolutions in tools for sure. Um, when we first got going, air tools were like essential for mm-hmm. any kind of like actual shop work. Now you use them, and I just ugh. now like a jackhammer. You yeah. could you can almost almost any air tool now is almost available in electric now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you can you can you can you know potentially not have an air system. I, really? I, I don't. I wouldn't say that that's a real thing. Like I think an air system is necessary. Yeah, so I'd say if you had to, if I had to pick three things, it would probably be air compressor, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. small bandsaw, okay, and a small belt sander, like an upright vertical belt sander. Really? Okay, just those three. How often do you see us on the belt sander in the shop? That's true, literally. It's like literally time. everything. You need to shorten a bolt eighth of an inch. It's effortless. Mm-hmm. You need to, you know, round the corner. You need to soften an edge. It's like you were on that thing constantly. Mm-hmm. 
and then the the band saw just like uh, we started with like a four inch i think the thing was tiny but mm-hmm. well, you need to cut something that's a piece of cake mm-hmm. you yeah know? yeah that um i remember when we evolved to getting one of those horizontal vertical conversion style band saws and I, we actually still have the, still same have the same machine. one. Like wow. it's, it's not a great tool. It. I still use it though. But uh, yeah, you could go from being a horizontal bandsaw, you'd stand it up, put a base on it, and now you have a vertical bandsaw. That was a really good tool to get. That one like literally changed the game you where can, you question, you cut, how did I get by without this? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can cut stock, the length. Yeah. All those things, can nip little corners off. Do Yeah, yeah it's, it's a big part of everything. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But everybody wants to get like welders and like machine like and if you ever want to buy one of those three and one milling machine thing don't do it the thing really a pile of shit <laughs> yeah it's literally the most worthless tools oh, any no. of those three and one combo tools are junk really like yeah the ones with the slip rolls with the little break might be good for tiny things but like that three and one milling machine drill press thing don't buy it it's horrible no even that three and one slip roll break Foot, foot shear or that shear don't buy it because it's it's not good for it's much good anything for like 20 gauge, 20 gauge oh, maybe very lightweight like stuff. like yeah most body panel stuff is 20 gauge but like it's it's a fucking nightmare man mm-hmm. don't buy it so pretty much buy specialized tools like okay this is a what this is only for drilling this is only like a drill press yeah, yeah like, you, well, you don't you need, need that though. You don't need a drill press, yeah. but you need a drill press. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean at least a it bench makes things pop a lot drill less press dangerous. at least. Mm-hmm. <laughs> True. Yeah, and it's way more accurate. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, and then like a decent angle grinder. That's you can make some pretty amazing shit with a hacksaw and a hand drill. Yeah. But I'd say if any of the mistakes that we made was buying cheap tools. Mm. Like they'll, you can, you can do some stuff with them, but it's not really worth it. Yeah. Like you'll just find frustration. So you're better off to get something better, like wait and buy better stuff. You don't need to buy snap on tools. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, you don't. You need don't need to, to buy snap on tools. You don't need but, to buy snap But in many no. cases you want to because they just a lot of them just work better and you get a lifetime warranty i mean it's kind of a once you progress thing. to a point where you just want to buy it for the very last time snap on is the play yeah yeah but that's not the play for every tool that's for no sure. if you're a home guy you don't need to buy it because no. it's not like for us we're working with it all day every day mm. and if you break it you you know the guy comes by you get a yeah, new one just, that's yeah. fine but for a home guy like we had mastercraft tools for the first 15 years but now that I have snap on shit, never going back. I'm never going back. <laughs> I still have, I still use the Mastercraft yeah. stuff. I mean, I have my my toolbox in my fab area is like you know a lot of our you know basically tools that we started with back in the day, and I use them all the time. Yeah, they still They're, work. Like they still work fine, but like the where snap on shines is like in their ratchets when yeah. you're under Precision. a vehicle and you're trying to just, you have this much room, yeah. that's, you know. Yeah. Those, those are, I think, are like. If you're working on a bench, Mastercraft's fine. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, major tools, major tools to, to own, you know, angle grinder. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, do you watch, you watch fan, f- Fanatic Builds? Yeah, Fanatic I've, builds I've watched his channel, yeah. yeah. He's a really good so YouTube channel. What makes it, what makes his stuff good is, he he is building this was mg what is it it like is some sort of british car british with the ls something oh triumph i think i think that's what it is but yeah he's ls swapping it but what makes his stuff cool or just to see what he can do with an angle grinder like literally well, you like can make amazing shit with an angle grinder. With an angle yeah grinder. like that's yeah like i think back to some of the stuff that we built in the early days when we had no tools it was literally just like angle grinders, hand files, blocks, and we made awesome shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I think back to the amount of time and effort that we put into it. It takes a lot. It takes a lot, but we made really nice stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can most definitely do it. I mean, you, you, can, you can even use an angle grinder with a zip cut on it to score an edge on sheet metal or plate to bend it mm-hmm. right on that line. Like, you can do that. But now you're welding that whole thing again, too. So it's more labor intensive, but you can do. You can most definitely do, some do it. awesome shit. Yeah. And actually, I still use that technique on occasion now to cut and bend. Yeah. Sometimes, mm-hmm. sometimes it's just the play that you have to do. 
Yeah. Um, what else you got? Let's see. Hold on. This is building a home shop, right? We're not talking about building a shop shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> building a shop. This is like on a budget, like you're trying to like stick with the budget. But um, let's see. Needs. We've talked about that. Like assessing needs. Go back to the building again. The building part of it. The building blocks, whatever. Building. Do you do it yourself or do you hire the professionals to do it? Because that, that comes down to your aptitude and your timeline. Yeah. Like if do you, you have the ability? Yeah. I built it because I had experience framing. Mm-hmm. So it didn't seem that complicated to me. And I had somebody that I could ask advice to, like, what do I got to do for this? What do I got to do for mm-hmm. this? Whereas you don't have that yet. Yeah. <laughs> so like I did it because I could mm-hmm. and I had experience doing it. But if you're doing it yourself, framing a building is not that difficult. Like I don't think you would. It's not hard. Yeah. It's just a lot. It's, it's like, just, and it's a different way of approaching it. Like you need to kind of know what you're doing. Yeah. You know, but it's, it's something you can learn to do and it's something you can do yourself. That's awesome. But it's, yeah, you just got to learn how to do it. It's not that hard. Yeah. And there's it's actually just a lot there, of work. There's a, there's a lot of channels out there that we have as resources on YouTube. Just Google search it and like you can learn how to do framing properly, you know, like cutting, a, cutting a hole for a door and a window in, in the, in them in a wall you kind of need to know how to approach that and how to how to finalize it so mm-hmm. that it doesn't just fall apart yeah. you know well, you can somebody. buy plans for it yeah you can oh. get all that stuff and they'll tell you exactly what you need to do <laughs> that's awesome yeah i mean that's what we did i literally modified those plans submitted them to the city and then made whatever changes i wanted based on where i wanted windows doors this type of stuff and then away we went that's mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, you can do that. So DIYing something like that's not that hard. I would say you could build a building out of wood, like standard traditional construction, easier than doing your container thing. Really? Oh, most definitely. Most but definitely. That's a lot of cutting, a lot now, of welding. Well, it's, yeah, it's, because the tools required are so much more basic as well. Like you got a you got a standard you know wood construction like a con- contractor's hammer claw hammer and nails yeah, and two by fours with a cheap skill air saw. nailer for a couple hundred bucks mm-hmm. that'll build your building just fine you need a skill saw and an air nailer and like a 10 horse compressor you can build a building whereas what you want to do is like it's going to be a lot yeah this it's a it's a it's a much more basic way of doing it that is 100 percent like you know excess you know it's a realistic and because you need big power to do what you're going to do yeah. mm-hmm. like you need a decent like probably 250 amp welder that you got to get power to or you got to rent some crazy generator stick welder mm-hmm. gas welder and do all that stuff and it's yeah it's a lot yeah. plus you got to learn how to do it properly first true yeah, <laughs> yeah like that's real welding that's yeah. not patching a piece of sheet metal into your car you're welding the building together before and then cutting all that out just abrasives man like the so abrasives or using plasma a, plasma are you using cutter. a plasma or are you using so oxy, to get oxy a, fuel torch cutting? You so know? if you're going to buy these things, that's $10,000 mm-hmm. worth of tools mm-hmm. right there. Easy. Mm-hmm. Like a 250 amp welder, $6,000. I have a 250 amp welder. It's a Where? Chinese welder, but it's That thing is sick. not 250 amps. It, it literally says it on the, on that the packaging. That is shit. Yes, well, yeah, the duty, the duty cycle is probably ten percent. Like, yeah, 10%. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh. it. <laughs> I'm gonna have to wait thirty minutes before this thing can be used again. <laughs> Anyhow, it says it's a tour. No, I haven't yeah, tested no. that fact. We yeah. just had is this big? <laughs> yeah, like no. <laughs> let's just let's just say that that's probably not up to the duty. Yeah, that's not, that's not gonna work for you. Do you need a frame table? Is you that not, an essential? No. No? No. No, you don't need a frame table. You, you could... Uh, frame, are you building chassis now? You don't even got no, garage No, no, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> no, hold on a second. Like, no, I'm just thinking of, like, essential stuff. Like, if you're going to be, like, fabricating stuff that you want accurate, like, don't you yeah, need... Yeah, but how big? I don't know. Well, if you're building a car from nothing and you have no chassis or anything like that, of course you need a frame table to be accurate like a fr- like what you have a for fabrication yes. table a fab table sorry a fab oh. table yes ah. you should have some kind of metal top table mm-hmm. but you don't need what we have like if you have a metal top table for fabricating and welding on you can build standoffs off that table and create yourself oh, i see 
you know, a sort of platforming air to mm -hmm. be accurate. But if you want something that's like that table's not cheap. Like that's no, not, it's like it's a real yeah. thing. Like I think just the piece of sheet was a thousand bucks. Mm -hmm. it's and then very you got thick. Yeah. So we made that and that's got what three hundred and fifty holes in it. So it was like took like three, four days to create that. Yeah, thing. let's 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 not discount that it's got a full <laughs> you know, structural steel base structure that it's attached and to. And ours is bigger than most. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah, ours is like full size, but you can buy smaller fab tables, but to build a chassis off of or get that big, even our tables, you would still build legs off, off of, of it that to, to expand. create, mm -hmm. you know, and then you start yeah. using levels and lasers and measurements to create something like that. But no. you don't necessarily need a table like ours. Yeah. No, as a DIY and sort of like, you know, budget friendly variation, I mean, two by fours, piece of plywood, you know, that, that will get, that will get you in the game, right? You don't even like need to have a metal top. On four by four tables, like made out of wood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't need a metal top. Yeah. You, you, a metal top is nice because yeah, of course, then the whole thing becomes a grounding surface for when you're welding or or now it's you don't have to worry about it catching on fire. <laughs> yeah, that's a very you know that's part. that's kind of important. That's nice. Mm -hmm. But you um, see guys build makeshift frame tables all the time. Oh yeah, and then you build off that platform. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I would not say that that's no. But I also just thought of something too for affordability when buying like tools or mm -hmm. even buying building materials. Marketplace is a great option. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can for doing that because I feel Why like the, you see deals all the time. For I like, would say our entire shop is built off of auction sites and marketplace and opportunity. Mm -hmm. Because if you were to try to go buy everything that we have, like retail, mm -hmm. insane, dude, it'd be insane. Yeah, like it'd be insane. The shop probably wouldn't exist if that's the route that we chose. Mm -hmm. Like if um, you tried to emulate this shop from just like today, we're going to go build and buy this shop, like retail, it would be yeah. millions of dollars. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, like so many things that we have is we built, bought when it was, we had opportunity. Mm -hmm. Otherwise we couldn't buy it at retail. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the stuff that we have is if we didn't buy it the way we did, we wouldn't have it mm -hmm. because you can't justify it. No, like we have a, 10 foot brake press that's that thing is huge yeah and we use it constantly and it's oh amazing you don't even think about bending metal anymore but the reality is to buy that thing's one hundred and twenty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. so to be able to justify having it if we didn't buy it the way we did you you couldn't justify it being there how many thousand pounds does it weigh Seventeen thousand pounds <laughs> mm. so like just the logistics of, of moving, moving it, it from one place to another is thousands of dollars yeah. mm -hmm. like it's crazy so it's yeah if we didn't get it the way we did but there's a, you, we don't need it. Mm -hmm. We need it, but we don't need it. <laughs> yeah. Like there's other options. There's manual versions. You can get a three foot blade for a, you know, hydraulic press that it would work tremendous for 90% of what we do. Mm -hmm. But that thing is just, you walk over, boom. It's like, you don't even think about it. Mm -hmm. But that's like a convenience item. At yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's luxury stuff, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that, you know, we could sort of unpack on this sort of subject of, setting up a shop like that but yeah uh, setting up a shop is a completely different topic yeah. yeah building a shop on a like a sort of like a budget friendly variation i mean wood do it with wood it's fast it's easy it's it relatively nice. inexpensive if we want to look at the actual reality of these different types of buildings i'm just thinking about like driving down the highway on one of our you know you're heading to SEMA, blah 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 and you see these things the common denominator in like those temporary buildings is the cars inside of them never get finished mm. because of weather and shitty. It's all that kind of stuff. But you look at building a proper building, like look at the stuff that comes out of it. You ever see anything good come out of those? No. <laughs> it's like Sometimes. You, like you drive. It's poor, rare though, right? It's rare mm -hmm. because like if you drive by one of those little lean to things, the hood's always up, the motor's out, it's on the ground. And that's those. It's, it it's, it's those ones that those cars that do come out of places like that those are the ones that you usually hear the stories on like you it's like some youtube sensation you know oh there's oh exceptions God, I built this rule. in a in a lean to yeah, on yeah, the yeah, side yeah. of my driveway <laughs> it's blah, very blah, romantic blah, and you're like, story oh, but wow that's incredible yeah like it's like to go back to your original point like i listened to a, a pretty amazing builder now and his coming up story was 
your story and he's probably part of the reason why you can't do that shit anymore because <laughs> it was like he was talking about how he did it in the underground of his apartment he would go down there at two o'clock in the morning oh when everybody God. was put up plastic <laughs> paint cars down there <laughs> polished grind wow. built entire show cars then in the underground of his apartment building and then people come in and be like what the fuck is my car yellow <laughs> but the car is already gone oh and it's my like, God yeah so i mean that's you know those are those stories that that's why that shit's not allowed to happen again mm. yeah there's just so much to think about i feel like when it goes to thinking of a storage space storage mm -hmm. facility all the things that go into it's, outfitting you're gonna it. get we're gonna get roasted again why but this comes from experience why like, are we gonna get roasted because it's like just build a building like you know yeah it's, it's not that simple it's not that simple mm -hmm. it's it costs money but i mean we're discussing your situation like you have a nice piece of property <laughs> you have a nice home the smart play is to build a nice building yeah and make that part of your plan what if you can't build what about renting is that a good solution or no like to go like like shop, going like, to find like a shop space yeah like, like just you hear guys that. that do like little co-op kind of things and i think that that would probably be a decent option if you believe the other people involved are of the same mindset and ability. Oh, yeah. Because of what we've seen a lot of times in that is it doesn't, it's not a shop. It turns into like a clubhouse. Oh, just and everyone just goes to there and drink, out, drink, fuck yeah. around, nothing mm -hmm. ever gets done. Mm -hmm. It's like, it just, yeah. Yeah, I've never really thought about that. That is a, that is a viable, you know, reality that does exist out there. People do do it with success. There's, you know, like, there's, we know some people that do it, oh, okay. you know, that share shops, share spaces, and they, they can put something together. But for the most part, what I've seen is it just turns into like a dump. Mm. Not so much anymore because shit is so expensive now. Like when we first started, I think our first space was like $1,100 a month. That's not bad. So I mean, you got two, three guys together that's and you share bad. that space is 300 bucks a yeah, month. That's it wasn't a big good. deal. Now you, that same space is like five grand. Yep. So it's not really a viable option anymore. But and then back then it was cheap enough that if you got like a kind of a little bit shitty space and maybe not a great building, mm -hmm. eight, nine hundred bucks, a bunch of guys. Next thing you know, they're just hanging out there drinking, hiding out yeah. from their wives and it turns into a shit show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you don't see much of it anymore because it's just too expensive to do now. So, mm -hmm. yeah, where we live, I mean, shit's too expensive. You just can't Way too expensive. Yeah. So, yeah. You, and you got to trust those people that you're that's, that you're that's involved with. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean you know he will start walking away stuff's broken like yeah it's, yeah it's a lot to manage you're like oh now you got to schedule your time in that small space so that's a that's another thing i mean these are all part of some people's reality and it's not something that we had to deal with because we so you know, we took a different it, we're, route we're avoiding what would give our advice it's to avoid all those all pitfalls the things, yeah not just dismiss you know these cheaper buildings all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff but we've been through it like what happened this year? I got a call at like, hey, the fucking lean to fell down. It's about to crush my car. Can oh you go dig all the snow off of it? Cause we're away. So I'm there with a sawzall and a fucking <laughs> shovel trying to save this guy's car. Cause his lean to collapsed. It's that's reality here. Yeah. 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 yeah it's unfortunate, but uh, we're subject to having to think about a lot more like weather sort of things here. Mm hmm but yeah so a summary of it is like budget that's probably one of the most important things in it is budget being like you said being honest with yourself and yeah. kind of figuring it out and i think what i've also learned taken away from this is like even though yes yeah, chipping container garages it might be a viable option but in the grand scheme of things like you talked about heating Are all of these work extra it? things is it gonna be comfortable? working it is so th that's something that i did not think about before yeah <laughs> i was just like oh just get the containers and weld it that's good but you need to make it actually livable if you want to make you it you want to make a proper yeah, workspace. workable yes and yeah so, because it's not something that you just throw together in the afternoon like mm -hmm. it's this is a real thing that's going to take real money real effort and real time yeah. And your workspace is a huge part of your success. Very true. Like, 100%. look at us. Like, we're constantly struggling with it. As soon as it gets cluttery, you just like, ugh, yeah. you lose the motivation. You lose yeah. motivation. Whereas mm -hmm. if you have a nice, clean, well lit workspace to come into, you get more done. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're supposed to, you're supposed to be doing this because you love it. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. 
like there's so many shops i've been to i'm like how do you work in here <laughs> like real. we get complimented on ours and mine still gives us anxiety because oh, it yeah. just gets so full and you're just like oh my god it's just so much to look at and you get overwhelmed but i go into some other people's shit and it's like how do you you're shimmying through things there's just piles of tools half tore apart shit grease it's dirty like you don't even want to go in there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then what comes out of there nothing, nothing. <laughs> that's where projects go to die mm -hmm. so awesome yeah anything else no same no, old please. just don't do anything <laughs> yeah <laughs> If you don't want to fail, don't try. Just Is don't that what you're saying? <laughs> Perfect no, solution. Don't do that. Just stay where you've always been. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. No, no, no. Don't no. do no. Don't nothing. <laughs> don't listen to Tim. Yeah, don't listen to Tim. <laughs> oh, my gosh. With that said, we will see you guys next week. Thank you guys for watching, listening. Bye.